Welcome to the Texas Goat Radio Show. I'm your host, Petorius. This is part one of the 1867 live stream by Owen Benjamin. All right, so I'm going to actually go through the, the intro to this just because I find um, it interesting to see how he opens it up because there used to be some kind of a hypnotic theme to it and there's just other attributes that I like to uh, to see. And this literally is the first time that I'm going through this intro. Okay, so the bike thing, a white guy stole his bike. Now he says a black guy does it and he stole a song from somebody else. And that's pretty much the, the spinal cord of his entire comedy career. Okay, that's interesting. That was uh, from whenever he was on the Joe Rogan experience. And obviously that's supposed to be a shorter version of Joe Rogan. Okay, so I still can't hear all that well. Uh, yesterday, my left ear was completely open, and that was a good day. Uh, today, it's back to being the way it is. So I can't really hear the music. I can just hear kind of the, the pleasant melody and whatnot. I can't really understand the lyrics. But it seems as though he's trying to be, with this intro, um, have some elements of the themes of his last five, six years or whatever. As well as, uh, well, not even as well as, but continuing with that thought, family, um, kind of like the pleasant melody, a lot different than what his opening was whenever it was just hypnotic and, and kind of bat insane. Hi, everybody. What's going on? I'm coming to you live from... Um, from a different spot in my house because uh, the barn, we're doing electrical work right now, so the electricians have to cut the power. The power that lets me speak my my jokes. <laughs> Purple chairs that fell over. <laughs> yeah, it's a little messy. I didn't have time to, to clean up up here. It's uh, the kids. Um, Comedy is subjective, so I, w I want to take a step back from how hard I've been... Uh, coming down on Owen for not being funny because comedy really is subjective. And that's one of the most ridiculous things I think a person can do as far as judging someone's comedy is saying that it's not funny or whatever. You can say that it's not funny, obviously because it's subjective and it could not be funny to you. But the reason why Owen Benjamin is problematic is because he uses comedy as a blanket statement in order to do the rest of what he does, which is being a dangerous predatorial cult leader. And I, I do think it's as simple as that. The kids do a lot of their playing up here. I don't know that that little chair might bother me though. Why don't, why don't we kick things off? I don't like when things are just falling over. Why don't we kick things off with uh, my struggle? And then we're going to talk about the border crisis and what to... <laughs> <coughs> my struggle. If y'all don't know, that's Mein Kampf. <laughs> and that is uh, the book that Adolf Hitler wrote. <laughs> and so, um, in context, out of context, I have no idea. I found that funny. I don't think that was intentionally... I don't think he was intending that to be funny. And how I will personally make Tim Pool fight in it. I'm not kidding. Okay, this is called My Struggle. I don't battle alcohol at all. I battle food. The one business Owen could never get off the ground would be a cookie company. I, I mean, it's just like... 
I, okay, I'll tell you this. I don't ever want to eat Keebler or Butterfinger or any of that shit. I don't have any desire to eat low-grade sugar cookies. Like, I don't, like, walk to the store and look at fucking Toll House cookies like I want to eat them. Okay, so it is funny. It is supposed to be funny, and I, that was kind of funny. Um, You can judge me all you want to about what I find funny. I judge myself a lot. There are times whenever I'm watching Kill Tony and I am not proud of the things that I've laughed at. That is for sure. Zero. But homemade butter for my But the actual the 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 display or the the uh what is it? The um oh I can't think of it, man. Um follow through of the joke. I was with like organic chocolate like dude it's it tastes so fucking good and then what i do is i i freeze the cookies i put it in the freezer and then i get like frothy raw milk that i and i dunk and walter goes father i'm very impressed at your uh willpower he goes i saw a cookie in there and you didn't eat it and charlie goes but you wanted to and i'm like <laughs> charlie's like why did you eat the cookie though they smile. And Walter goes, Dad had willpower. You didn't eat the cookie. And I'm like, I did it. Are you right? All right, ladies. All right. It's moments like, okay. One of the things that I'm trying to do is to just be in a better mood and not be as um, blanket angry with with certain things, certain people. And this is a good example with him. During that, I mean, it's kind of goofy that he's talking about food while Eminem's beat is going on in the background, acting like he's doing some kind of deaf uh, poetry jam or whatever that's called, slam poetry. But, I mean, comedy-wise, like a three out of a ten, maybe? I, I, like, I got a chuckle whenever he's – and the only reason why I laughed whenever he said my struggle is because I didn't realize that he was actually going into a bit. Uh, one thing though, that you need to remember, cause that was, it wasn't awful. You know, it wasn't, um, he was talking about his kids. He, he was somewhat likable. Someone's somewhat charismatic through that. One thing that you need to remember whenever Owen is somewhat likable and somewhat charismatic, if you can believe that there are people that think that he is both of those things at any given time is that he literally in 2020 during a worldwide crisis, stole a whole bunch of money from a whole lot of people in a investment scam. In my mind, my opinion, 100% provable. And so many people walked away just because they knew that they just cut their losses. They ended up seeing him for who he was and uh, took the L and walked away. That's one of the reasons why nothing has happened to him about that because it was hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars I, in my opinion and there's people that that um also call out owen benjamin on his stuff that disagree with me whenever i say that's how he bought his house that's how he bought the land for his house was that investment scheme other people say that he sold property in la and all that kind of stuff which yeah there, there's some uh i think that's provable that he actually did but I don't know. I, to me, it just seems like the timeline, it just adds up. Gentlemen, the uh, chair has been fixed. I, uh, Bob Murphy's uh, discussion I did uh, is up now, so definitely check that out. I, people have been making clips about it. Shout out to the Elite Savages. Shout out to like Anchor and Telecaster and Wobbly and everybody in there. That did he say shout out to the Elite Savages? <laughs> so there's a, there's, it's, it's like solid, it, it's, um, kind of mimicking Scientology. <laughs> the more you give, the more you pay, the more you subdue, the more you or subdue, the more you submit, uh, humble yourself before the, the, the leader big, you get your prestigious title of elite savage. That, um, that almost makes me sick to my stomach that there are people out there that take pride in that just because of the whole situation. They're just crushing it. Charlie's a savage. Oh, Charlie makes me laugh so hard, dude. He's just like, Dad, you wanted to eat the cookie, though. And Walter's like, no, Dad has willpower. I have been I have been doing better. Yeah. To the moon, Owen Benjamin. All right. And so one, one thing that I want to uh, 
bring to attention right now is that this is 1.25 and it sounds like he's talking normally. Tells Bob Murphy why anarchism fails. Let's unpack. Uh, and that's- he talks so slow. His cadence is on purpose, in my opinion, and he does it to numb your mind and, and just to get you to be um, submissive and agreeable. And that's one of the reasons why I speed it up. Now at unauthorized.tv. I didn't know that Vox Day also debated sweet Bob Murphy. He is a sweet man. Like, I legit like him. But, uh, you know, pacifism is, uh, is a pipe dream. Is a pipe dream that uh, it's like little kids in a tree fort making a little flag. Like, I, I get it. I get it. But uh, so anyway, here's a, a little clip that one of the elite savages made. Let's take a look here uh, from the interview. It just... Bob's always looking at me like, like he's like, how am I going to, how am I going to unpack this? So, uh, this is my response about pacifism. This idea of pacifism is nonsense. Okay. And I don't want to sound mean, but it's like, if people are trying to invade, like people are like, Oh, anarchists, I hear it all the time. Notice the difference in the cadence, the, the, the tone while he's actually talking to a physical person or somebody that is, that he can actually see. It's almost like night and day. Whenever he's speaking to his audience and he's just putting himself out there to get what he wants because he does it with intention. That's one of the things that a whole lot of people do, uh, especially in the successful realm of of doing things. Whenever you're trying to persuade something or have something, you, you do it with intention. You don't just do it. You do it with intention. Time. Well, just stay off my property. Where do you get property rights? Who grants you your deed? It's like, okay, without that, you'd have to defend with violence your property every single day of your life, which you could not do, because you need a united front to guard against any pirates. So the idea of no government is absolute nonsense. Okay, so the way I'm using the term, and again, I told you, I stopped volunteering the word anarchism because for some people it literally means no rules, period, and that's not... But I believe in private property and so when you say what would the border be it would be the, the boundary that, that not can grant you. To your private property well i believe in natural law and so i think there would be just natural like, laws might makes right silverback okay. takes it i hate to burst your bubble man but it's not even debatable natural law I, i'm around okay, well, it's not like you're the first person to say it to me so it's not <laughs> you say no, it's not first do you have animals do you do you farm or have animals or are you around nature a lot no, I, I am. And I'll tell you right now about nature. The big rooster that can peck the hardest gets all the hens. Natural law is not respecting pacifism. Pacifists can only exist within a state. That's why dudes like you should be holding on to the federal government with both hands. Because the federal government allows you to live in a world where you can claim to be a pacifist. In, in natural law, anyone with a bat now has your land. Okay, so as you can see by his face, he, I mean, we, it was very nice. I make fun of Michael Malice really intensely to the point where he was like, I happen to know Michael Malice. I'm like, oh, really? So how do you feel about uh, him promoting <laughs> transsexuals to confuse children and abortion? And he's like, uh, uh. this is one of the things that Owen Benjamin does. He, he just picks and chooses. And it's what a lot of people do. It's what a lot of people do in order to make their life, uh, at least in their brain, in their mind more tolerable and less miserable as they pick and choose what they want to pay attention to. Almost. I I would think I would dare say everybody does that. But one of the problems that I personally have with Owen Benjamin is that he uses all of this in order to persuade people into bowing their knee to him and lifting him up as a big or as the big, because his bear name is big bear, which means his name is, Inside the cult is big. He's big and everybody else is small. He's important. Everybody else is not. And he, he frequently tells them, but he does it in such a way that it's it's extremely abusive and manipulative. A lot to unpack there. I'm like, I bet there is. So many people need to touch the grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then the irony is, is all these anarchists keep saying that I'm straw manning them. no. They're only straw manning me because they're like, oh, so you don't- well, if you look into it, anarchy does not necessarily mean the lack of government from what I understand. And I mind you, it's been years since I looked into it. But one of the misconceptions that I, I walked away from and I didn't look into it much 
it was enough for me to, to realize, nah, <laughs> not really for me, but, um, and everybody's got different interpretations for everything. But Owen using universal truths such as, well, if you know anything about nature, it's the biggest and it's the baddest. Yeah, it's the survival of the fittest. That's what everything is. Until you get into a civilized society. That's why we actually have people that live until their 90s or 100s who need somebody there to be able to take care of them. We're not the Roman Empire throwing defective babies and the elderly off a cliff. Think there's any problem with the government at all? So, so you think the government? And I wouldn't attribute that to the government, really. Just the kindness and the mercy that human beings are capable of, probably uh, attributed to the the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Perfect. So you want to just take everything from me? I'm like, no. And they're like, British common law and the law of God. And I'm like, the law of God says that uh, sodomites get burned alive and British common law, you hang thieves. Oh, you're strawmanning me. I'm not. You brought up British common law. I'm not talking about Bob Murphy. He didn't do this, but I see this on the Internet all the time. OK, see, this is <laughs> he's sitting here talking about Bob Murphy, talking about anarchy, talking about the, the way people um, have dissected their their argument or or um, debate or whatever. And then he starts just bringing in random other things like it's just one. It, it's one circumstance. It's a conversation that two people had. And if you're going to talk about that, why not just talk about that? It's probably, which I haven't looked into it. I haven't watched the actual debate, but probably didn't work out for Owen the way he thinks that it did or the way that he's trying to paint it to have worked out. Every single time I've seen him have a conversation with anybody besides the people in his inner circle that is part of the cult, it never works out the way he tries to paint it to have worked out whenever he's talking to his cult members. You brought up British common law. British common law means you hang th- like it's super aggressive. So we're going to talk about the borders, right? The the migrant situation. And uh, bear in mind, anytime Ben Shapiro tells you to do something, don't. Whenever you see a Jew in a cowboy hat, it's uh he's trying to start a war that he's not going to fight in. All right. So and and guys, they don't want to keep Mexicans out. That's why they keep calling them illegals. Would you like the next level of spellcraft? Notice how these guys never say Mexican. The next level of spellcraft. That's one. Th- he'll he'll sit there be casting spells while he's pretending to break spells. This is the Texas Goat Radio Show, and I'm your host, Matorius. As always, till next time.